WOCA. Five minutes before 11 o'clock. It is August 5th, 2015. I don't really say the date on every segment, but on John Fuller's segment I do because he is an attorney, and that means he's in the courtroom a lot. And if you're listening on August 5th, did I say October? August. August 5th. What did I say before? Anyway, it's August 5th, 2015. If you're listening on that date, then you're listening to a live show and your calls are invited. The phone number is 622-9622. John Fuller is an attorney here in Ocala at the law firm of Fuller and Fuller. The other Fuller is his beautiful wife, Janet. And uh, anything goes if you have a question about anything and specifically the, the areas of law that John is a specialist in. How do we know? Oh, how do we know who, uh, which lawyers are specialists at which things? Well, the Florida Bar has defined that. It's been a real gray area, and it's been an area of uh, some abuse where people call themselves specialists. Uh, the Florida Bar has now ruled, as a, as a uh, rule regulating Florida lawyers, that uh, you cannot uh, refer to yourself as a specialist or hold yourself out as a specialist in an area of the law if you are not board certified. Uh, well, that's have, a good I, idea. I, yes, I think so, because to be board certified, you have to take a very grueling uh, examination. You have to have have practiced substantially. You have to have tried a substantial number of ju- jury trials. I am pleased and ha- am proud of having been board certified by the Florida Bar uh, since uh, it, it first started. Uh, I think I was in the second class, uh, but I've been board certified since 1985 as a civil trial wow. lawyer. Wow. Uh, I later went back and, and became board certified by the National Board of Trial Advocacies in, tri- in civil trial. And also I'm board certified by the Florida Bar in business and commercial litigation. So I can can say appropriately that, that I specialize in those areas. So if any of our listeners are in an automobile accident uh, or they have a contract dispute or a corporate dispute, uh, those all fall in the area of civil trial or business commercial litigation. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, my wife, Janet Fuller, who was a registered nurse at Shands for seven years before becoming a lawyer about 25 years ago. Uh, Janet focuses her practice on doing exclusively uh, Social Security disability, but she is not board certified, so we don't say she, quote, specializes. But she does that. Uh, 95% of her practice is dedicated mm-hmm. to handling uh, people who have are disabled, and have been turned down by Social Security. Uh, She tried a case yesterday in Orlando, and uh, so uh, that's what we do. And uh, that's, you know, I also do uh, some uh, complex major uh, family law dissolution of marriage cases. Uh, That I limit to a small number of major cases because they're very time consuming. They usually involve questions of business and commercial litigation, the division of a family corporation, the valuation of a professional practice, things that we do in business law. So I kind of picked that up, but I intentionally did not choose to go and and seek board certification in that Uh because I do not want to do uh, a volume family law business. I respect the people who do. I refer is weekly to them and, and some some lawyers have three and four and five paralegals and they take a hundred family law cases and uh, I admire them for that there, there's certainly people who need that uh, but but we do four or five mm-hmm. major cases uh, involving complex issues so I do do a, a, a restricted uh, kind of uh, family law practice the uh, the rain has uh, caused the authorities in Tallahassee to issue a warning to us red citizens of the state uh, to be on the lookout for uh, unlicensed repairmen who may come to our homes to put new roofs on our houses, whatever. 
when you mention contract disputes, if, let's say, I didn't do my homework and I did hire somebody who didn't have a license, and now I feel like there's, there's a need to take this person to court, but the fact that he wasn't licensed, does that have, is that going to make it more difficult for an attorney to try my case? Well, here's the problem with that, one of a more practical nature than that. Uh, people who aren't licensed... Uh, by the the governmental agency where they're doing business. People who do not have a performance bond uh, for their business. If they cut a hole in your roof accidentally, you know, do they have insurance? Uh, People who who come out and start doing work without licensing, without uh, insurance, those sort of things, if they do, and they're very likely, they, they are not well trained, they're not people who have the ability or the knowledge uh, or even the integrity to do the job right, uh, you, your, your chances of recovering money from them is, as a, pra- is a practical matter, I see. very, very so, limited wow. because they probably don't have any assets. They certainly don't usually pay to carry liability insurance. And we, we saw a lot of that uh, in South Florida and even in this area in 2004 after the state was racked with a number of very severe hurricanes right, right. Uh, and, and houses were damaged, trees were down, uh, people were out of power. Uh, I know we were out of power almost a week one time. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was a very difficult time. And, uh, and, and the, the good licensed contractors who had all the wherewithal they were overwhelmed. They couldn't do all the jobs. Bet, yeah. So a lot of people, you know, painted a sign on the side of their pickup truck and rode around saying, we fix roofs, and if your roof's leaking, you may be a little bit desperate. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. that's that's hopefully, a, a you know, an isolated, not frequently occurring situation. Another thing that was interesting during that period of time that I think has probably even been brought to light more in the news lately with things after Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans where all the near of society broke down. I mean, law enforcement were oh, looting yeah. stores and that sort of right, thing. Right. Uh, you know, I think it, it behooves everybody to think and have a plan because after a hurricane you have no power. Uh, you can't live in your house without right. leaving all your windows open. That creates a certain security risk. There are an awful lot of people who try. Police are overwhelmed. Fire people are overwhelmed. Uh, First responders are overwhelmed. Uh, They may not be able to get to your road because a big tree is down across it uh, in a timely manner. And people need to think about things like that and, and have a plan because in the last analysis, you're responsible for your own uh, welfare. Oh, ultimately, yeah, absolutely. So even if you knew that somebody was not licensed, it would be not smart because... No, no. Uh, in, fact, in fact, you know, they, it's unlawful for them to do that. Uh, uh-huh. So, no, I would uh, I'd definitely recommend that you look for somebody. And you can, and you can check their, their licensings. You can call the city or the county... Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the phone lines are open if you want to call John. The number is 622 uh, Just about up to the middle point break. So uh, if you call right now, uh, we'll squeeze as much of it as in as we can. Otherwise, you might have to wait through the break to hear the rest of the answer. Uh, but today is August 5th. Hard to believe it's the fifth day of August already. It really is. It uh, It's moving uh, very rapidly. I know uh, uh, school teachers are planning to go back to work. Uh, right, they're, right. they're actually, I believe, uh, and I don't keep up with this uh, now that we don't have a, a youngster in, in uh, school, high right, school or right, grade school. Right. But I think they're starting early this year, uh, so they'll finish with finals before Christmas. So it's it's not far off. What is the sport your son does? Is it baseball? Baseball. baseball. Yes, he's uh-huh. played this whole summer in the uh, Shenandoah Valley League in Virginia. And if you've never been to that part of the country, it is a beautiful area. i would never been and it's absolutely Do you gorgeous. think he's going to be a pro? Oh, golly. You know, that's every every kid's dream. Yeah, he's yeah. working hard at it, and, and he has some talent. But uh, one-tenth, basically about one, 
one-tenth of one percent of all the kids that play baseball go to college on a baseball scholarship. So we're very grateful that Kevin has achieved so he's that already by, beat the odds. by being a scholarship uh, yeah. uh, college baseball player. Uh, going to the pros is a fraction of that one tenth of one percent. <laughs> so it, uh, you know, I know that's his dream, but uh, fortunately he has a plan B with his education. <laughs> is it an attorney? Is he <laughs> no, no, Kevin. Since he was a youngster and and saw us practicing and in trials and that sort of stuff, his his pat answer was, "I don't know what I want to be." But I know I don't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> and, and after the break, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that, maybe. All right. Well, we'll take that break right now. And again, the phone line is open if you want to call John. The number is six two two nine six two two. Just for your information, we are broadcasting this show on August fifth. So if that's the same date on your calendar, then you can call in right now six two two nine six two two, and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today's sunshine mixing with clouds. There'll be a couple of thunderstorms around this afternoon and evening, the high 89 to 93. And later tonight, partly cloudy, those 72 to 76. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with clouds. Watch out for an afternoon thunderstorm or two, high 89 to 93. Friday, partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm around in the afternoon, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain-free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener, Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Robin, let's try a little plant trivia. Name this nursery. It's a not-for-profit, and it teaches growing and caring for plants to their students. Oh, that's easy. Kenny's Place. Or how about this one? It's a nursery conveniently located between Ocala and Bellevue. Again, it's Kenny's Place. Or how about this one? A nursery with a wide variety of just what you need or want at the most reasonable prices. Kenny's Place, of course. Kenny's Place at 7677 Southeast 41st Court. Give them a call at 867-1213. It's a caring place for people and plants. It's Kenny's Place. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing service, we also offer fence row spraying. Now is the perfect time to get ahead on weed control for an overall aesthetic appearance. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. We are licensed and insured. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. There's a car accident in this country every five seconds. That's why Allstate thinks it's time for an entirely different kind of car insurance with features like accident forgiveness and a safe driving bonus. It's called Your Choice Auto, and it's only from Allstate. Are you in good hands? You deserve better. Sign up for Your Choice Auto from Allstate. Call the McDonald Agency today at 622-2333. Features are optional and subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Insurance, Northbrook, Illinois. We are the source, W-O-C-A. All right, 11 minutes before 11 o'clock. John Fuller is here. The show is called Legally Yours, and your questions are to be answered if you want to call them in. The number is 622-9622, and it is August 5th, just to repeat the date that you're, you're, the show that you're listening to is on. And it's 84 degrees right now, so not, not a bad day. It's a very you. nice day. No, I yeah. was, I, I, uh, I was very uh, pleased. I've, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been working in, in the office most of this week, except when I did have to go somewhere uh, to work. 
it was always pouring down rain when I had to make <laughs> right, it from right. the front door to the car. <laughs> yeah. So today is a welcome change, I tell you. Uh, but, no, I was talking before the break, and I'll just touch on this briefly. Uh, our, our son said, I know I don't want to be a lawyer. Well, right now the practice of law is so different than when I started uh, 42 years ago. Uh, like I, I was saying, in 1979, there were 23,000 lawyers in the state of Florida. I started in 73. I don't have the number for that year, but I just heard this one at the Florida Bar Convention about a month ago. Now there's 104,000 lawyers in Florida. Many of them are graduating from law schools that have a profit model. They charge very high fees for tuition. Uh, you go to that law school. Uh, many people get student loans and grants, so the law school oh, gets yeah, right, the law school right. gets paid. It's making a, a, a I, I assume a, a revenue because it's continuing to sure, exist. Sure, yeah. There's about 60 percent unemployment uh, of the graduates, uh, and they usually come out owing over a hundred thousand dollars in student <laughs> wow. loans and debts. And average starting salaries uh, for those 40 percent that do get or a number of those that do get get jobs uh, is, is not significant. So it, it's, uh, it, you know, I think it's a, something that needs to be looked at. And I, I read in the, in the paper this morning that the president of the Florida Bar, uh, the new president who was just sworn in about a month ago, uh, is recommending that Florida open up and have uh, open reciprocity with lawyers from other States right, that was in the without, news. Without, yeah, yeah. Uh, without the necessity of, of coming to Florida and passing the, uh, right. the bar exam. I remember that. Uh, I, I think that's I, – I'm, I'm very opposed to that simply because there are ways if a, if a lawyer from another state has a case here, he can appear here in court in that case. It's called pro hike vice. It means for this matter. And uh, and he can uh, and and he can get admitted to handle that case. I've tried cases in Georgia, uh, and and you know that's what you do. And uh, it you know there's a there's a way for it. Uh, so I'm I'm very much opposed to uh, having the uh, uh, Florida open up. Uh, many people want to come down here and semi retire because of our weather. They want to come down from the north. Right, right. They want to hang out their shingle and, and practice part-time. And with 104,000 licensed lawyers already right. in Florida, there's an economic overlay of how successful those lawyers can be. And you don't want somebody out there who's an economic failure who may be more inclined to take shortcuts in the practice of law. It is a profession not a business. Can I ask a question that, that if, it's, if it's not in line with what you normally want to talk about, then just say we don't we'll want We'll see. What does a paralegal actually do? And, and does a paralegal work for you? As yes. A, as, oh, so Paraleg my paralegal, or our paralegals, works for me, and they are, uh, they are extremely well trained. They have a certification program for them. Uh, our paralegals are, are certified. Uh, the uh, the job they fill to some extent is a little bit like a physician's assistant, a uh, a PA for right. a doctor. Uh, they can't practice law. They can't give legal advice, uh, but they're wonderful at compiling information, organizing things uh, like discovery documents. Uh, putting together exhibits. Uh, my paralegal goes to court with me uh, every time I go. She's been with me, worked with me for 34 years. Uh, we go to a trial. Most of our trials take usually a week to try. Uh, they are very paper intensive in, in, a, lot of, in a lot of cases. Right, right, right. And she sits there at, right at the council table with me and has all the exhibits organized. Uh, when I'm picking a jury, uh, I can focus on my dialogue with the jurors and look at them and ask them questions, and she's taking meticulous notes uh, so I don't have to be uh, distracted. Uh, I can look the person in the eye and ask them if they can be fair and impartial and give my client the benefit of an open mind. 
I always wondered. I, I know some people are studying to be paralegals, and I just wondered what. It, we well, there's a, there's a big need for it, and and, and some lawyers have have adopted a a, a practice model. Uh, where they want to do a large volume, rather l- moderate budget practice, uh-huh. and they do that. These are like practice expanders that doctors do. You know, they have one doctor and three PAs that, that can see right. patients and right. so forth and so on. So they have uh, they have multiple paralegals who have most of the hands-on contact with the client, and there's nothing wrong with that. At this stage of my career, and the way I like to do it. I like to have personal hands-on contact with the clients, so I limit the number of cases I take so that we can handle it in those manners. And you have a phone call. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with John Fuller. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, if a person uh, is a foreigner from a different country and is a lawyer and decides that they want to come to the United States, uh, get your citizenship and so on and so forth, and to continue practicing as a lawyer, other than the bar, do they have to go back to school to get certain credits, or do they just have to take the exam, or what, what would be the situation there? Well, I, I can give a pretty short answer to that. I don't mean to be abrupt, but I really have no idea. Uh, you know, that's not something that somebody has a problem with and, and comes into my office with that we deal with. Um, I, I know that there was uh, a refresher course and that law school offered a few years ago for Cuban Americans who had been practicing lawyers in Cuba and came to this country and uh, so they had a modified program so they could go back and go to a, a, a Florida law school uh, take a accelerated uh, course not starting from scratch and then be eligible to take the bar exam but those things are very very technical very rule specific and uh, I, I have no uh, reason to be involved with that and uh, most people who are from another country who are coming here uh, with a background in law, they have researched that or contacted someone with the Florida Bar, uh, that sort of thing, to get those answers. So I'm sorry I can't give you a more meaningful answer, but that's just not something that, that we see in the day-to-day practice of law. Right. Uh, real quickly, uh, is there an age limit to be a lawyer? I mean, like if you hit a certain age that uh, you're, you're more or less forced into retirement? No. Uh, not as long as you remain in full compliance with all the rules regulating the Florida Bar. That means you have to have uh, a minimum number of continuing legal education seminars and you have to report those and the bar monitors those and if you don't take those continuing education uh, hours uh, that are that are required uh, you will then be uh, uh, not allowed to practice law. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Always appreciate you calling. Uh, and, and just one last question, I guess, about the paralegals. So, so would I ever like go to your office and maybe sit with a consultation and you could say, you know, you don't really need my services. A paralegal can handle that for you? Well, there are times in our office, and the way we do it is after I meet with the client, uh, if they are bringing in, say, two banker boxes filled with uh, documents, right. they, they don't need me to sit there at my hourly rate and go over and categorize and understand what those are and summarize those uh, documents and start uh, making an, a, a preliminary draft of the, uh, of the category and the inventory of those things. So that's something that, that I would introduce my paralegal and that, that she that would, make sense, she would yeah. take care of because our hourly rate for paralegal is $95 an hour. Uh, my hourly rate is $400 an hour. So we try to provide a very efficient product. Right, right. Uh, so those types of things, they do. And uh, they're very good at it. Uh, and everything they do is under my direct supervision and control. Uh, John, we are at the end here. We need oh, to get, give out a phone number and... Uh Okay, uh, our office number at Fuller & Fuller is 352-547-4292, toll free 855-534-2565, and there's a lot of information about our law firm and Janet and I on our website at ocala-lawyer.com, and I encourage folks to check that out. 
Thank you, John. If you need any of that information repeated, just call us here at WOC. We'll be glad to repeat that for you. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Larry. We'll uh, be enjoyed it. We'll be Appreciate right back. It. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Word of more shots fired at Camp Shelby in Mississippi, even as police search for the man who opened fire on soldiers training there yesterday. The camp says it's not on lockdown, but rather a heightened state of security, which means their soldiers are aware of what happened and they're being prompted to be on the lookout for anything that doesn't look right. On day seven in the fight against a massive Northern California wildfire, crews may have finally turned a corner. Well, crews now have a line around one-fifth of it, 20% containment, and say they hope to have this fire 